All right, everybody. For today's critical thought, we got a good one. I'm going to talk about the hoarder syndrome when it comes to game design and gameplay and ways to get around or mitigate it. Now, we've talked about this before both here and on Game Wisdom, but the Hoarder Syndrome is a common situation that happens in RPG or RPG-based games where players will needlessly hoard items for who knows how long throughout the game, with the ever-popular response being, maybe at some point I'll need it. And this can lead to the game being intentionally frustrating if you're refusing to use healing items, revive items, or even special items that could really help a boss fight or a common situation, but you keep saving it for later and later. And, like I said, this has become almost a popular trope of the JRPG genre. If you watch the cartoon The Amazing World of Gumball, they even did a little parody of it on one of their episodes. But, the problem with the Hoarder Syndrome is that it can lead to a game being more frustrating and punishing than it really needs to be, and it can often point to problems of balance when it comes to playing your game or to the variety of options that the player has. Now, the challenge or what makes it tricky to solve the hoarder problem is that it's really more of a give, give and take in terms of how much you want to do it. Because many of the most challenging, most interesting games have to do with resource management. I mean, the roguelike genre in of itself is built on that basic challenge. It's not about you just being able to use everything you want at any time. If I have five bombs in the buying of Isaac, I need to know the when and where to use those. But if you overtune things too much in the other direction, then any kind of resource management gets thrown out the window. It's hard to feel scared or have to worry about conserving your resources when I can just literally craft uh, five dozen arrows in Tomb Raider or pick up several hundred rounds of bullets in any kind of first-person shooter. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people have trouble with getting that balance right. Either it's so limited that it becomes punishing to play, or it's so abundant that you lose any and all balance or threat. So the question is, how do you get around the hoarder syndrome? And we have seen several different ways to get through it. And the other night I was thinking of a, I think a very interesting or it could be a useful philosophy to use going forward. But when it comes to the hoarder syndrome, the most important thing to understand is what is causing it. And that has to, again, do with what the player is being limited by and what are their options. One of the most interesting and sometimes problematic elements we see in RPG-based systems is when the game will explicitly give the player something really powerful, but make it a consumable, and there can only be few rounds of it either available in the short term or even just over the entirety of the game. And the thing is that scarcity and power are typically the two main considerations when it comes to this kind of hoarding. If I have a healing item that will completely restore my entire party, bring everyone back to life, then of course I'm not going to use that on a common fight. I'm going to wait until like the final boss when I know that you know all the chips are down and there's no more combat. But what happens if I'm stuck on a boss before then and half my party is dead? Do I use that item then? Or do I think to myself, well, it could be bad now, but what happens if I need it later when there's something even harder? And whenever you have these limitations, it becomes very easy to hoard these items, especially when they are either unique or provide some kind of amazing benefit to you. Now, what makes this become very frustrating is when you're trying to give the player a bunch of choices, but at the same time you're limiting them. And this is one of the issues I ran into with Prey, and I won't be dedicating, I think, an entire critical thought to Prey in the coming days, once I've completely finished it. But Prey features a lot of unique items that are used for specific situations, and I'm not going to spoil it here for you. But the problem is that you're always limited by how many that you can have based on what you find, 
or what you can craft back at save points. And you run to that exact same situation that we have in JRPGs, where do I want to waste all my really great tactics on this random fight, or do I want to hold on to them to a point where I'm at maybe a boss, or maybe a fixed encounter that I could use them for? Because one of the things that has, or one of the major events that we've all ran into that have kind of been the stem of the hoarder situation is when you're playing an RPG or RPG based system, or RPG based game, sorry, and you use an item or a tactic or something that you can't replace, and then minutes or even hours down the line, you realize that now you need that item, and you're kind of screwed. And your only choice is either to restart or endlessly grind for another option. And I think, I know I've been there before, I'm sure a few of you watching have done that as well. But you can even see this actually in games where you're forced to make hard choices about character growth. Such as every time you level up, you get a one perk point. Or let's say there's a fixed number of ways to improve your character, and you have to make those hard choices. And again, what happens if you go the wrong way? you're kind of stuck and you're not able to get around. But that is a topic for another time. Now in order to combat the hoarding syndrome, the first thing you have to look at is how readily available these options are to the player. Again, if I can only buy three health potions in the entire game, then I'm going to hoard those very religiously. But if every store can sell me 500 health potions for dirt cheap, then I'm going to be more comfortable in making use of them. And that is one of the easiest ways to combat hoarding, by removing the scarcity element of it. Another point is to avoid introducing overpowered items. When we last talked about this, one of the popular examples I used was from Shadow Hearts, that very interesting RPG series from the PlayStation... I think it was PlayStation 1 to PlayStation 2, or 2 to 3. Now, I'm not, I'm pretty sure it's 1 to 2. But, with the, oh no, wait, my mistake, they're all on PlayStation 2. I have to get the gaming encyclopedia in my head working. But, in the game, you got this very powerful item that essentially allowed you to attack an enemy infinite times as long as you kept matching the timing on the button prompt on screen, because it's kind of like a wheel that's going around. So this item was, of course, incredibly powerful, and there was only like five or six of them in the entire game. So, you know what I did? I hoarded them all until the very, 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 very last boss fight, and I proceeded to use them all and beat that fight very easily. But, again, there were times in the game where I was either near death or I died where I could have used them to save me, but again, I thought, what happens if I need it during the final fight? And you have to be careful, again, about balancing your game around these overpowered items. Because if you want the player to make use of these tactics, they have to be assured that they'll be able to keep using them. Now, with that said, though, it's time to talk about when things get very interesting. And some very unique solutions developers have found to get around hoarding while still presenting a resource or a limited number of chances to use this. And it has to do with thinking in terms of micro and macro. It's an ever popular adage of, you know, you may have won the fight, but you lost the war or vice versa, where you're dealing with limited resources in the ever present situation, but this is not going to impact you two hours down the line, five hours down the line, and so on. And it's kind of a way of having your cake and eat it too the player is still conserving resources and there's still a limitation, but it's not a case where if I use this one potion now, three hours from now, I'm going to die because I don't have it. And we've seen varying games make use of this in the past. One of the more interesting examples, of course, is regenerating health in action games, where after every battle, when the player is not under direct combat, they're able to recover their health. Again, it's kind of a ludo-narrative dissonance right there, but it's done its job to allow the player to essentially go all-in on a fight, still have to manage their resources, but know that they'll be back at 100% for the next fight. Because in many action games previously, if you ended a fight, let's say at 50 or 40% of your health, chances are you're going to die at the very next fight, and there's not much you can do about it, simply because you don't have that buffer. 
Now, another option for games that deal with limited resources or limited inventory space is to allow the player to craft or easily regain those items, but they can only hold so many at a time. You see this in many of the open world based games, where the player gets limited consumable items or ammo that they then can craft from resources out in the field. And it's never just a case of one to one, as in if I want to craft 30 arrows, I have to click craft 30 times. It's usually I do one and I may get 5 to 10 arrows. Now this does present a few issues though, and the problem is when the solution is essentially grinding, or it's something that is so repetitive that it just breaks the flow of the game. We saw this again with games like Tomb Raider or Horizon Zero Dawn, or I think even some of the Far Cry games, where every time you have to get your resources back, you have to stop and craft. And again, it may only be a few seconds each time you do it, but it's breaking the flow or the gameplay process of playing the game. And this is typically why for a lot of people, if something, if the solution to something is simply to grind, then just remove it and will usually lead to a better game. Now, going back to the idea of micro versus macro, one of my favorite examples is from Dark Souls and the use of the Estus Flask. For those of you who somehow have missed out on Dark Souls, what they did was, in the original game of Demon's Souls, you had consumable items for health, just like with any other RPG. And once again led to that hoarding situation of, do I heal now, or do I just wait until the boss fight and then use it all there? Which for a game like that, which also dealt with the same kind of semi-permadeath kind of feature, made things extra frustrating for some players. So what they did in Dark Souls was say, you have infinite health, or infinite potions that you can use, but you can only have X number of those uses at any given time. And the way to recover that was of course go back to a bonfire, but when you do that, that resets the area around you. And this way, the player is free to go all in on any fight or any boss fight with the knowledge that they'll be able to regain those. But there's still the resource management involved at the micro layer saying, okay, if I have to travel 10 minutes from one bonfire to another, can I do that with only six drinks of the flask? And this was one of the reasons why I really, I put Dark Souls, I think, slightly above Bloodborne in terms of its design, because I hated the blood vial and silver bullet systems of those games, of that game, where you had to spend your resource to always get more of those back or grind enemies for them. Because it's just a way to pad out the grinding. And it really, I think in my opinion, wasn't really that needed. The game was hard enough to begin with and it's important to let the player go all out in these cases. Now, with that said though, a few more examples of games that have fought the hoarding syndrome, again by looking at the micro versus the macro. One of those being the XCOM and XCOM 2 remakes, or I'm sorry, spiritual sequels from Firaxis. In those games, you are always limited based on the number of times you can use a special ability or item in a mission. But, those charges are always replenished whenever you go on to the next one. So the player is never put in a situation where they have to think, oh no, if I use this grenade now, what if I needed three missions from now? No. It's more, again, focusing on the micro layer of what's happening right now. And in this case, or in this way, the micro play, while it's influencing the macro side, it's not condemning or it's not causing win or lose because of it. Another popular example are RPGs that instantly refill your health and mana after each battle, allowing the player to once again focus everything they have at the micro layer and know that they'll be back up to strength when they go back to the meta layer or the overworld, and then they can do it again and again and again. And all this is doing is cutting down needless grinding and again needless hoarding. Because if I know that I'm recovering after each fight, then let me use all my health potions. Let me easily recover those and I can just focus again on ooh, excuse me, focus again on the task at hand. Now, one final example and then we'll begin to wrap things up is from Doom 2016. In Doom, 
And like most action games, you have resource, or you do have resource scarcity in the number of ammo or rounds of ammo you have for each weapon. But what they did, once again, is keep it to the micro layer and give the player a very easy way of replenishing them using the glory kill and the chainsaw kills. When you kill them using the glory kill, it lets you regain health or health drops. When you use the chainsaw that requires charge up and fuel, you gain ammo back. And once again, this allows the player to go all out, but still having to be uh, conservative about how much ammo they use. You're not going to just walk into a room and immediately use your heaviest weapon. And that's where that kind of resource management comes into play with action games. If you've watched anyone play a game like Serious Sam or Doom or you name it, you're not just going to walk around with your plasma rifle and rocket launcher and shoot at grunts. No, you're going to kill them with the weakest weapons and save your, your big stuff for the cyber demons and so on. But it's very tricky again to deal with this hoarder syndrome or the hoarder problem because you can push into or you can push it to either extreme. Either it's so punishing that the player will never use all the tactics you give them or it's too generous and then it's like, why bother? And that's why I like to think about things in terms of the micro versus the macro. Because at the end of the day, the player wants to be able to see through the, to the entire game. And it's important to focus on the micro when it comes to any kind of worry or management. Because if you focus on macro when it comes to resource management, it can again lead to that downward spiral we talked about when we last covered feedback loops in video games. But let me know what you think in the comments below, and if you'd like to suggest a topic for a future vlog, let me know. My final question for you guys watching, can you think of games that have managed to get around the hoarding situation or the hoarding problem? Be it through either making items very easy to get, just removing any kind of grinding, or just getting really creative. Let me know in the comments, but otherwise, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to check back daily for discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games. Until our next video, have a great day. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check back around 10 Eastern for regular streaming. If you like to suggest games for me to cover or topics to talk about, let me know in the comments below. For a collection of my writings, as well as weekly podcasts on design, check out Game-Wisdom.com. To support the Game Wisdom Patreon, you can find us on there on Patreon.com slash GWBicer. A dollar will get you into our private Discord channel where we talk game topics and more. Five dollars will get you voting privileges for any major event, including the Saturday Night Grab Bag, Patreon-funded goals, and more. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoy more videos here on the Game Wisdom YouTube channel.